Welcome to Makers International, a podcast of makers from three countries, two continents, and featuring five guys separated only by the same language. Here's your host, Richard Morley. Hello, everyone. <laughs> right, welcome to this week's show. Um, down from the left to uh, right, we have uh, Mr. Joe Whitaker. You're right, Tamia. Yeah. <laughs> And we have Mr. Jason McGinn. Hello. And we have Mr. Chris Q. Hello. Mr. Morley is uh, not with us today. He's probably playing with his uh, other half scroll saw. And uh, <laughs> I am here. You all know me, or you should do. I am Jamie. Um, before we get uh, um, away with our guest today, Mr. Chris Fisher, the blind wood turner. Hello. Uh, we're going to go through. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go through some of our shout outs from last week's show. Uh, so thank you to all. We're going to go to Mr. Jim Dockrell, Mr. Steve Nealon, Mr. Dave Gunner, and Mr. Gabe, uh, Gib Clark. Uh, thanks again for staying, uh, uh, keeping in contact with us, and uh, all your comments from the platforms of the likes of SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, and all the other various platforms. Uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Yorkshire Grit, the Woodturner's Abrasive Paste. For more information, visit www.yorkshiregrit-.com. And our good friend Chad over at Mancrafting, who makes the awesome powder-coated custom Yeti mugs. Links to our sponsors are in the description. can also be found at our webpage, which is makersinternationalpodcast.com forward slash sponsors. Uh, Mr. Cute, do we have any random listener questions for today? We do, and I have a random listener question that is basically po that is uh, I'm going to pose this uh, from myself today, if you don't mind. I have a question. I, I'm just kind of curious to ask the people that have a, that we've gathered here today, um, and I'll tell you why th uh, this question came up when I'm, we're done. Um, here's the question, and it's it's it should be a quick and easy one. We can get on with talking with Chris real quickly. Uh, but the question is, other than political posts, which I'm guessing is pretty much everybody's least favorite. What annoys you the most when you see it cross your social media feeds? Depending on it, you know, it could be Instagram, could be whatever. What type of posts do you look at and go, "Oh man, I really didn't need to see that or read that or don't like reading it or whatever"? So that's the question uh, 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 that is being asked today. What and it maybe helps some people to understand maybe not to post a few things if we all come to an agreement on a few things here, but other than political posts, which I'm sure most of us will kind of look at and roll our eyes. Uh, what, what comes across your social media feeds that you just would really rather not see or hear about? It's got to be, be the prayer posts for me. So like that one, like equals one prayer or one share equals one yeah. thought or whatever they put up. So they'll just steal some like Google image of a sick kid in a hospital bed. Like just to get views and shares and stuff. So yeah, mm. that's what I hate to yeah. see. No, I, I, go on, Joyce. If you don't agree with me, then take me off your friends list. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so you're basically saying it's the ultimatum post. It's the post that people make that give you an ultimatum. Yeah. <laughs> Do it or else. It's Do my Facebook. <laughs> Jamie, you, you get them ones that sort of like uh, send me fifty thousand dollars and oh, or I've got this for you, or I've got that for you, and all that sort of stuff as well. They're they're pretty boring, you know. Yeah, I hear you, Chris. You got anything that rolls yeah. across your social social media feed that you just really would rather not see or hear about? Well, it, what what makes me grand, and it could be quite controversial. It's when we think when when I hear people say our thoughts are with you you know it's 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 easy for people to say and uh just i'm gonna get really really gritty here but so sort of like when the uh the manchester bombing was at the arena mm -hmm. ariana, ariana grande and uh manchester we all pulled together and i'm a mancunian and that same week i got on the train for the first time with bamba as on my own with as a blind person with a guide dog and uh, someone was sat in the disabled seat and nobody offered me a seat and the, and the train was packed out. So, you know, considering we all pulled together and our thoughts are with you and it's just, you know, people just make statements that are so 
that that pisses me off. It's, like, all, it's, yeah. the, it's the trivial yeah. sentiment that you know that they probably really don't mean, but they say it because it's just it's like you know it makes themselves feel better. It makes themselves feel better. It's, it's it, you know, it's when something serious gets taken down to something as as normal as like a good morning would be. Uh, yeah, it's like no, yeah. please do so. You know what I don't like to see, guys, and I'll be honest with you because I I have been for the past six months, and I Jason can attest to this because we've spoken about it. I have been limiting my feed on my social media uh, because I'll see political posts, things like that, and I'm just automatically I will just unfollow people or i will snooze them for like 30 days just because i've been trying to clean up my feed so i can only see what i want to see what bothers me the most i'll be honest with you and annoys me the most is when people post pictures of their injured hand or <laughs> their, their finger or their nose or their cheek or their thumb or their stomach or their like i don't want to see your injuries from your shop I really don't because we all happen to work in shops and we all happen to because and I'll tell you why because I immediately see somebody's cut finger or you know uh, you know something lodged in their cheek and it makes me automatically feel that because I look guys I'm in my shop all the time and I and it, that kind of stuff has happened to me and I don't need the reminder you know it's like yeah. do me a favor because I can see that photo and I feel it myself it's like really oh, really pisses me off I was like I was ready to push a piece of wood through my table saw without my push stick and then I remembered a photo somebody showed me and I was like <laughs> you jerk and I used my push stick <laughs> it's lucky that I was looking at my phone while I was doing it or else I wouldn't have thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, Jason, I, I get your point. It's just I don't like I don't like to see gruesome cuts and stuff that people tend to like to post when they do that kind of. It's just I uh, I understand what you're saying, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, and by the way, you're an asshole. I hear um, you too. But 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 I but I t but I'll tell you why I asked that question. Why that was today's question? Because you, you all know uh, Zach Herbaholtz, right? Z ZH Fabrications. Uh, yes, yes, he yes, had a, yes. He had a post on Facebook today. I did that just cracked me up. And he, he basically just says, "Can you all just go back to posting pictures of your food, please?" <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> "I think he was probably talking about politics. I don't know, but it, it just kind of got my head rolling. Going, you know what? That's he, interesting because I'd like to find out what everybody hates to see." On does he want there. pictures of my food before or after? <laughs> <laughs> I I actually won on that. Uh, um post because i posted a picture of, of a saint i discovered uh yesterday which was a spotted dick english trifle <laughs> oh, God. i'm afraid to ask i'm afraid to ask i thought you were going to tell me you made you baked a donald trump kick uh, no, no, I, I, found, I found it on google <laughs> Anyway, so what's, what's meant um, to be nice? Um, blue waffles are meant to be really nice. Joe, you're <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody I Google know. that. I, Googled, I think Google fixed their algorithm on that one. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't Google that. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, Zach's post. Zach, and if you're if you're out there, we love you. Uh, but that was I thought that was hilarious, just because somebody just basically just and he did it in a very non passive aggressive way. It was uh, it was perfect. Can you all just please go back to posting pictures of your food, please? I was like, yes, Zach, that's hilarious. Anyway, um, so Jamie, yeah, that's the only question I had today was you know, what do you not uh, like to see in your social so. media feeds? So. so, everybody, Chris Fisher, the Blind Wood Turner, is our guest today. You say hello to everybody, Chris. Hello. Hey, Chris. Hello. There we go. That, that was pretty simple enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's so, right. <laughs> so, Chris, uh, I personally have had the pleasure of meeting you a couple of times now. The first time was uh, uh, UKIS uh, yeah. uh, last year, and obviously Make Essential just gone. Um, Alan who is uh, part of this podcast. He's actually out in the chat right now as we speak. Um, he uh, he has a question, which is like a, um, a superhero kind of question, really, is how did, how did you get into making? How did it's I get into the... making? Well, my background yeah. is in making and engineering. When I left school, uh, I was a crankshaft engineer, but a prank, crankshafts for... Uh, warships and ocean going liners so these crankshafts are 25 foot long and the balance weights are as big as this table and so and my father was an engineer and my brother's an architect so the the technical sort of side and the engineering thing runs in the family and all my aunts and uncles are very gifted tradespeople and work with their hands 
So uh, I got into uh, being a wood turner by, and I've mentioned this quite a few times, was I just quite simply wanted a vampire steak because I'm a huge horror film fan, especially the vampire genre, and I just didn't want to whittle a stick. So I listened to YouTube for 600 hours. We've worked out. Uh, and we're just listening to all the usual suspects, you know, Mike Walton, Carl Jacobson and Captain Eddie. And I was listening to that and all these images were coming in my mind and I was trying to assimilate all, all the information about tools and techniques and, you know, health and safety and PPE. And then I got to a point where I thought, right, let's not put this off and went out and purchased the lathe and got some tools and got some wood and, Dagnamit, I ended up with that vampire steak. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All ten digits. So it was because, uh, well, the blind wood turner uh, genesis was uh, because of a vampire steak uh, about four and a half years ago. There you go. Now, uh, I remember uh, uh, Maker Central, you was actually talking about um, your, your logo and uh, you was actually talking about the the sunglasses on your logo, and they've actually become a, a bit of a thing now. Where yeah. if you if you're if you're kind of seen without them, you you kind of get a bit of a telling off. I do well. The the guy uh, quickly Nicola is a, a business advisor, uh, and Nicola specialises in workforce development and executive development. She's she's uh, got lots and lots of clients and colleagues all over the business community in the northwest and one of her good friends and colleagues tim marner he's got an amazing creative agency he did the logo and he rebranded me and boy if i remember and you know sometimes i misplace these glasses these ray-bans and they've got to be these i mean i've got a logo uh i don't know if you're seeing that on the sleeve here yeah I'm, yeah, if, I'm, yeah. if i'm not wearing these glasses nicola will get a text message they're the wrong in glasses, he'll say, or where you <laughs> <laughs> I've got this creative agency watching every move that I make, and if I'm not sticking to my brand, uh, I get told about it. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's, all, it's all about the image, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. is. Sorry, who said that? Oh, yeah, so brand is definitely key. And you're definitely your brand. That's what really shines through with your channel and everything that you do because it, it's like the inspiration behind your projects and seeing you like just cracking on with things. That's what gets people involved and keeps people watching. So I can definitely see where they're coming from in terms well, of where we've got this cracking logo. Stick yeah, to well, it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. I mean, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's all about inspiring people. That's why I was... I was doing doing my own thing in the workshop, but you know, I thought, you know, I can do this, and I genuinely, sincerely mean that if I can do it, anybody can do it. And it's just having that tenacity and confidence and self belief, and that uh, wanting to achieve all of your goals, and anybody can do it. Disabled, able-bodied, it doesn't matter. So that's why I started the YouTube channel to inspire and motivate people. And you know, I've got this brand image now and this logo. And it's always the driving force behind the, the YouTube channel, the public appearances and the demonstrations. You know, uh, being being completely blind as I am, uh, it's it's a strange place to be. But I have I have such such an amazing uh, amount of support around me, like being asked to do things like this and talking to amazing people from all out over the world. It's just all, it's always driving me forward and pushing me on to, uh, you know, new adventures. So it's like I say, not dead can't quit. So it's just got to keep on rocking and pushing all the time. Yeah, I, I remember you saying, I remember seeing you say that um, on, uh, I think it was Jimmy's vlog actually. Yeah. The first time, uh, not dead can't quit. And that was, that was just perfect. And, like you said about inspiration, you are basically the epitome of inspiration without a shadow of a doubt. You know, the, if it, like I said, if you can do it, anyone can do it. Oh, you know? and, and it's not it's not a glib statement and I don't make it lightly. I really, really want everybody to have a go at making something. 
and you know we're all part of this amazing maker community and Nicholas says it and I say it all the time we, we're, we're such a nice group of people you know and we share ideas and we want others to learn and progress and be successful you know there's none of that you know oh this is mine you can't see it you know it's like yeah this I've had this idea have a go you know adapt it make it work for you but this is the idea I've had and uh, it's it's very kind when everybody says you know you're, you're, you're so inspiring and you know, we're, we're, yeah, we're yeah. Here. And I, I'm very honored and very humbled and ev everybody that makes contact with me I genuinely mean I, I you know I really appreciate it and I love everybody for saying it and I, I really do mean it. I wouldn't say it but didn't mean it because oh, I don't, of course. you know blow you know blow smoke up people's backsides but, yeah know. of course well being obviously uh, a blind wood turner there's there's obviously can't be that many blind wood turners in this world do you know what i mean so have you ever reached out to any others if there are any others a few a few, a few have got in touch now uh I, d I don't know the level of their visual impairment uh and some might have been wood turners before getting visual impairment or and obviously a lot of wood turners are getting on in years you know just men in sheds and you know wood turning was very popular years ago and decades ago in schools and colleges here in the uk uh there's very very few and i'm probably talking only a few completely blind wood turners in the world and as for completely blind professional wood turners that i am now and i earn a living and do the demo circuit you know it's probably just two or three probably so i'm quite a unique prospect but that's that i don't get big-headed or complacent about it you know it, i would i would love you know uh, as many good turners with visual impairment to persevere and keep at it and if the day comes when they, they might go completely blind you don't have to sell your lathe or get rid of your tools you can just adapt and crack on Things take longer, but hey ho, it's still yeah. in the fight. Yeah, uh, go on, Grace. Well, I was just thinking, like maybe um, you could describe to if anybody's listening who has impairments, uh, especially with vision or anything, how yeah. would they start getting into something like wood turning uh, without you know approaching it in a safe kind of constructive way that you can they can build into feeling comfortable and gain that confidence. Well, the, the best way the best way to go about it, I would suggest, would uh, definitely pop along to a local wood turning club, you know, and don't don't take no for an answer if they give you all this. Oh well, we've never had someone that's got a severe visual impairment here before. And, oh, it's a bit dangerous, and don't take no for an answer. Say, look, you know, with your guidance and your your instruction, and you know, it can be safe, and by by the nature of being blind i have to start stop feel so so much and i'm inherently safe because of that process so i know for a fact that a lot of sighted wood turners they'll leave it spinning while while they move the tool rest and they can look where they need to go because they can see a pencil mark spinning and ghost images and all this sort of stuff and they can be straight in there you can't do that when you're blind so uh really by nature of the disability we're, we're much safer we have to be we can't take chances but it's like you'll you'll get a feel with practice you'll get a feel for how how the tools uh respond to different wood types you'll listen to how long it takes for the tool to make that sliding sound along the tool rest and after a while you'll, that sound will become almost part of the muscle memory so that when you're roughing out, that's almost uh, letting me know when I'm coming to the end of the tool rest. Uh, but I've got something uh, that's that's just been made for me that's uh, going to help because I did fall off the tool rest a couple of times at Maker Central, which can be a bit unnerving. <laughs> uh, but again, it's just you know. Yeah, right. I've had a moment. Stop the machine, and this goes for anybody that wants to get into wood turning. And they've got visual impairment. You're going to have some moments that make you pucker up. Just stop the machine. 
you know, relax for a minute, assess the situation, and go, right, I think I know what happened there, and just get straight back into it and enjoy the process. Uh, it's 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 something you definitely can do. So if you if you were a wood turner and your eyesight's going due to old age or illness, don't give up. Just readapt, reprogram the brain, just uh, rehash things, and keep on going. Don't give up these things that you've been passionate about for you know a huge part of your life. Just just yeah, just keep going, man. Don't give up. Never give up. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I can tell you that. Um, <clears throat> Prior to coming on to today's show, um, I, I was out in my shop and I, and I had just a, a, a square piece of wood that I, I chucked up on my lathe. And just because I knew we were going to be talking to you today, um, I said, you know what? I'm going to try to see if I can turn this piece of wood just into like a dowel. I'm not going to try to do anything fancy. Uh, I'm going to turn it into a dowel, but I want to do it. And I closed my eyes mm -hmm. and I attempted to try to do this. Yeah. And um, that that whole pucker up point that you're talking about, <laughs> my friend, that is real. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I don't mind telling you because I was determined to keep my eyes closed and try to turn this thing into nothing more than just a round dowel. And right. um, it can be rather, it can be rather intimidating. Uh, uh, having, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't have an impairment to my sight. Uh, and so I, I know where my stuff is. I've seen it. I'm able to look at it. And I kind of know generally, even with my eyes, eyes closed, where things are. And yeah. so, but even with that knowledge, it was still a bit of a challenge. And I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't get through and, and do it. I, I, I was not able to, to do. Uh, yeah. So it takes a certain amount of determination, my friend. It has to. You've got to be absolutely determined <clears throat> to want to do this in order for you to get it done, I would assume. Well, yeah. Well, you assume correctly. You, you have to be completely determined, and in a way, when when you were well, when I was in that position of having no sight, and I know that I'll never get my sight back. It's an incurable condition that I've got, uh, and I, my my retinas are gone. Uh, when you when you've got that uh, in front of you, you have no choice. Uh, but to uh, push on now uh, quite a few people Mike Wall being one of them when I went and spent the day with him a few years ago at his workshop I said to him well you close your eyes and have a go at roughing a piece oh man <laughs> and, and he that, he's hit the start button he went Arr! and hit the stop button straight away went no chance I'm not doing that and I think it's because that you know that you still got your sight, so it still still seems a bit of a game. Yeah, uh, you know what? You're right. You, no, you're right. I think your your perception there is absolutely one hundred percent because I I knew I could always open my eyes yeah, if so, I wanted to. So that just takes away a little bit of the serious uh, seriousness of you know the whole being blind thing. But when you are blind and there's nothing you can do about it. And you want to become a wood turner, you will do it. You will achieve. I pray that none of you guys ever go blind. But if you were placed in that position, you would be able to do it. I guarantee it. If you said, I've lost my sight, but I want to continue wood turning, you would do it. Right. But, but the, pro the process just may become initially a little slower, but once you get used to it yeah. and understand it, it becomes better. I mean, can I, Chris, can I ask you, did, did you ever come across a point in time where you, when you were first doing this, getting into it, did you ever get to a point to where you did actually hurt yourself because you made a mistake? I mean, or, or is, is that like more times than you can count on one hand or is it because were you actually very successful and never had a problem? No, uh, I, by, by, like I say, by the nature of how I have to turn, I haven't had an injury wood turning, uh, not what I would call a serious injury. I've had catches, you know, uh, and wood wood has split and, you know, blown off the lathe. But that was just really, you know, in the early days of not getting the dovetail right on the tenon or the mortise and, you know, just in, in proper tool use. I, I injure myself doing non-related wood turning things like uh, I've severed arteries in my thumb just by trying to cut cut a cable tie with a Stanley knife and uh, I've, I've 
uh, was using a, a blowtorch uh, a few years back and forgot that I had the blowtorch on and went to reach something and oh. Oh, yeah, and, and my and my coat uh, incinerated uh, and it's things like that or you know getting oven chips out of the oven you know I'll miss misjudge the height of the counter and throw chips all over the kitchen and you know I'll break crockery and trip over and lose my balance but to answer your question in in the workshop no i'm in my zone i've got i've got the heavy metal on the ipod i've got a cup of tea you know you've got some steel in your hands and some wood on the lathe and no i'm good to go that cup first... tea and heavy metal all right <laughs> that's our british role yeah but i must admit every morning before i go in the workshop i am very nervous and it generally involves a trip to the loo. And I'm being serious, but I'm, you know, we're, we're putting everything down on the table here. I am nervous and I have to go to the toilet and I'll go into the workshop. And once I've made that first bevel contact, that's it. It all disappears and then I'm good, good for the rest of the day. Mm. That, that very first couple of moments where you've got 3,000 RPM spinning, you know, a big lump of oak. And you're going, oh, I'm doing just for that moment. You think, what am I doing? And then you go, right, ride the bevel, lift the handle, and you go, tick, 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 tick. and then you feel the shavings, and they go, oh yeah, I remember how to do this now, and that's it. I'm I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah, uh, we actually had a question from uh, Nate out in the uh, out in the chat. Um, he's he's from uh, Young Man's Workshop. He said. Uh, how how does Chris handle negative criticism, and do you get any? Well, I I I get uh, it's it's really the the uh, well a few people say it's impossible a blind guy can't wood turn, so that's that's a that's a common one. Why 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 does he wear a face shield if he's already blind? He must be able to see. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously they've not thought it through properly. I might be blind, but I don't want a, a spindle. Broken nose. You still so, like your teeth. Yeah, yeah. I still like my teeth, and I don't want you know uh, a piece of wood stuck out of my chin or you know a broken nose. So they don't think it through. They're just uh, misinformed and ignorant. And I've a good friend of mine, Mike Newman. Now Nicola and I are both. Uh, trustees and ambassadors for his charity. He's the world's fastest blind man and he's got nine world records, eight of them Guinness World Records. And he has no eyes. He has two prosthetic eyes and he's been blind his whole life. He can drive a car on his own at over 200 miles an hour with a chase car telling him what to do. And he's the world's fastest man in a racing truck, offshore Formula One powerboat, motorcycles. And people say to him, impossible. It's a load of shit. He must be able to see. No one can drive at 200 miles an hour and be blind. They're just idiots. And you've just got to say, yeah, whatever. You know, uh, obviously these, you know, it's, it's these people that don't have a YouTube channel. They don't know what's involved. You know, they've never posted a video. It's, it's the same old, same old story, guys. The keyboard commandos, you know. and Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they just. And I, I do get a few a few dislikes. And I get, I get a dislike as soon as I have a video up. Someone dislikes me, and I don't know if that's a personal thing. Uh, and uh, I, it doesn't annoy me, and it doesn't upset me. But I'm curious why, why are you disliking what I've done? Why? You know, is it something to do with my editing? Is it something to do with this, that, and the other? And I'm just curious why have you disliked this video? Why? That's that's why. Because that's because they can. Well, you know what, and, and and Chris, you know there are some folks out there, and and if if I if I and I've posted over a hundred and seventy, I'm going on two hundred videos now. If I don't get at least one dislike on a video, I almost feel like I failed. You know, it's like that somehow, some way, because some some folks just automatically will hit that. You know. And there's no rhyme or reason to it, so I've stopped trying to figure it out a long time ago. And I, I no longer ask why. I just don't friggin' care. You know, yeah, thank, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And if that's your response, well, then, hey, you know what? Maybe next time, you know, and then it next time comes, and no, I still get the same thumbs down. It's, you know, whatever. I don't care. Um, 
It's not so, something I should. I'm, what I'm trying to say is, it's not something you should ever occupy more than two seconds of your time with. Because I mean, and don't ever question your. I'm um, in that. Not that you do, but and for anybody who's listening, it's nothing that you should ever question yourself about. Just because you see that on a video, it's just it's just somebody being a an absolute. You know, a well, I'm not going to say it, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but head. <laughs> they do also take it as a positive because what they're actually saying, they're claiming that your work is too good for a blind person. Mm. So well, I am that good. So do you know what I mean? <laughs> Same yeah. with the driver, like being able to drive with absolutely, like literally no eyes, mm. and they'll still claim, "Oh, he must be able to see." Well, no, that's the talent that he's got. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So there's positives in their perceived negatives. Yeah, of course, and. You know, uh, Mike suffered with juvenile glau glaucoma and he was in that much pain. He took both his eyes out when he was young and he's had to teach himself how to drive uh, articulated lorries and performance cars and Audi have sh filmed commercials using him and he's been on TV all over Europe. And, you know, the guy is such a huge inspiration and hero of mine and it's an honour to be associated with him. Uh, but, yeah, people even say to him, it's impossible. And it's just, you know, if they can't do it, they don't think anybody can do it. And exactly. That's the limit of their intellect. So, yeah, good luck to them. They're not going to stop me, you know, achieving my goals. And from from the get-go, Nicola said, look, uh, you know, we're going to have to put our head above the parapet here. And uh, I think I think Jimmy DeResta said it uh, on a podcast we were listening to the other day. Where you know people will say, you know, you know, oh, you get all this sponsorship and you get this, that, and the other. And he said, if you don't like it, set up a YouTube channel and you go after it. I wish you the best will in the world. But stop bitching about it. Go out and do it. And you yeah. know, there's enough for anybody to go out and achieve their goals and desires. Put your head above the parapet, stick your neck out, get on with it, and see what comes. Don't just sit there bitching about it. Yeah, totally criticizing good. the people that do put their neck out. Yeah. yeah. So, what, uh, you know, go on, Chris. No, well, I was just going to say it's just a matter of, of, of looking at people, and and you got to understand, no matter how we might want to um present this, um, there's always going to be somebody. That, that you, 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 there's no, there's nothing so profound that any of us here today can say that will put a stop to any of this. It's just, it's one of those things where you just basically have to look at it and go, it's a part of the world. I recognize it. Um, I, and then, and then I decide how much time I want to spend my life with it. And I've just decided I'm going to spend very little of my time with it. Um, you know, and if I, if it does get to the point where I get a little annoyed with it, I, I'm like you, Chris. I'm more would like what Jimmy said. I said, you know what? If you don't like what I'm doing, then go out and do it yourself or yeah. STF you. I mean, yeah. you know, if, if you know what I mean, just then just please just shut up, you know, because yeah. uh, if you don't want to do it, then I don't want to hear it. Um, yeah. if, if you want to do it, then go ahead and do it better than I am and prove to me that you are who you are. And I will go, you know what, man, you are absolutely right. That's awesome. But In yeah. fact, yeah. ask away and I'll help you get there. Yeah, but yeah, and if you and if you have a pro yeah, exactly, Jason. And if you have a problem doing it, then I'll help you. But do me a favor, take get off your ch armchair and get out in your own darn shop and do something better than I was, uh, or more proper if you happen to be one of the safety police, and yeah. and do it yourself and get on with your own life and leave me the hell alone. Get out there, I, mean, make I don't need that. Cut. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I love you. It's it's cool. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we got another question from out in the chat from Mike Atkinson. Uh, he would like to know how Bamba's getting on. Well, uh, Mike Mike Atkinson and I, well, we, we sort of like uh, adopted each other as brothers. So we've had this amazing relationship going on uh, probably since I, I started on YouTube and. Uh, Bamba's doing fine. Like I say, he's he's had a bit of a a poorly stomach this past week, but he's he's such an amazing amazing creature, and he's so clever. And yeah, he's he just since the day he arrived here, he's been he's been a blessing on the house and to me, and he's he's enabled me to get out of the house and uh, do things on my own now with uh, a huge degree of safety. Uh, and 
just to summarize quickly you know uh, the best way to sum up what a guide dog does or a seeing guide dog is i'm the navigator he's the pilot i have to know the route in my mind and i will say right we need to turn left here bamber or turn right but when we're going along that route bamber will go hold on a minute dad there's a car parked on the sidewalk or the pavement there's a there's a there's a trash can on the sidewalk or the pavement uh you know there's dangers here there's a curb here dad there's a crossing and you know i'll say to him find the button and he'll take me to a uh, a pedestrian crossing uh, and he'll take me to the button and if i need an elevator i say take me to the button he'll find a, an elevator and when he comes to some steps he just stands on the first step and waits for me to get my uh, orientation and then we'll we'll go up the guy is absolutely amazing and for those of you that don't know that i think it's a similar similar amount of money in america but that you, you're talking about fifty thousand dollars worth of dog you know so wow. yeah wow. so mm. uh, what kind of, chris if you don't mind me asking but what what kind of dog is Bamba? he's a german shepherd nice and like his it. his father was american and his name his father's name was get this elvis no shit <laughs> <laughs> true. True. but apparently the the uh, the british guide dog so uh, organization have a very successful breeding program with german shepherds from the states so uh, yeah his father was american so, that's uh, awesome yeah. <laughs> Glad you to hear the summit days and coming out of there. So, so, so Bamba's dad is out there. So Bamba's dad is out there going, "Thank you very much. Thank you very much." <laughs> so, you know, he's, he's, he's a full German Shepherd and he's uh, two years and two months old. I heard he was he wasn't anything but a hound dog. He ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Here come the puns. Here we go. <laughs> Your fan club's here. <laughs> well, Chris, do me a favor, because I don't want to—I don't want to not recognize Nicola because she's she's been there uh, beside you pretty much uh, since we we've, we've been online with each other today. Uh, but do me a favor and thank her for turning the light on, uh, be, because I, I don't know that <laughs> that it matters much to anybody else, but I can see you better now. Yeah, well, it didn't matter to me, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> this is something uh, else that I really love and I did want to bring up. Um, just your whole like humour behind your condition because it just breaks barriers because I'm sure there's a lot of people listening that would find it intimidating maybe approach a blind person how do you initiate that interaction but every interaction i've seen with yourself has just always been fun laughter like chill out no worries let's have a laugh about it and that's the way you really beat things i think with humor and it's just great to see it's honestly so, no you are you spot on there my friend and when you have a life-changing traumatic disability thrust upon you You've got two options. You either sit in a room and cry all day, or you go, screw this, I'm going to kick life in the ass. So I chose the latter. Now, I do not blame anybody for sitting in a room and crying. I wish they didn't, and I'd love to get older than saying, this isn't the way. But I completely empathize with that. And after the first year of being blind, and I went through the, the, uh, the bereavement and anxiety of going completely blind in such a short time. I was really ill for three to four years and the anxiety was crippling and the nausea, the panic attacks, muscle spasms, uh, you know, sweats and not sleeping, not being able to go out. And at that time I had a support worker uh, and he'd come to take me out to the shops or to the bank and I couldn't go, I was that sick. Or I'd be out with him and I'd say, uh, I'm really nervous and have a panic attack and you've got to take me home. And it was just, when you think about it, it was just panicking over little things like, what if I need the toilet? Where is the toilet? What if I don't know where the steps are in this new place and I trip up? And it's just all that sort of stuff. That goes through my, and the hallucinations as well. 
because uh, you, you obviously a big part, a huge part of who we are is the ocular references and processing that we get. So when you lose that, your brain's going, what's happening? And it freaks out. So you have a lot of hallucinations. Hmm. So there's a lot to deal with. And uh, I have said, if I didn't have a family and a good support network, things might have turned out differently in a very, very seriously sad way. Uh, but luckily they didn't. Uh, that was when I had to dig deeper than, you know, I'd ever thought was possible. But here I am, you know, life's certainly different for me, but the journey and the path that I'm on, uh, I, I wouldn't change. And this will really fry your brains now. Uh, but I say it and I, I mean it. I don't want my eyesight back. So, because I couldn't deal with the trauma of going through all that again after what I've been through to get to where I am. Plus, you'll have to rebrand again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jamie. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> where, where, I, where I am right now, it's, it sounds strange, but it's a good place to be. If, if somebody yeah. listening was in that dark place and, and needed that kick, um, what, what would be something you'd want to say to them? Uh, go, go and seek help, you know, whether or not it's from uh, professionals, friends and family you can confide in. Don't deal with it on your own. You know, there are, there are ways to, to get through it. And it's not a quick fix. It's not an overnight thing. But please, you know, don't let it get to the point where there is no way out. There's always a way out. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a long road. But just just stick with it. Stick with it. And there'll be some days where you think, I can't do it. But please, you know, just on, on those really dark days, you know, Go, go and find someone that you can be with and, and get some uh, care and attention. You know, and Chris, I, I think it has to, I think it has to have a lot to do with, you know, the fact, I mean, cause a lot, let's, let's face it. The majority of us cannot really truly relate to what you, you went through. All we can do is kind of try to sort of imagine what it would be like to go through what you, you know, what you went through. I mean, especially it, it because I mean, at one point in time, you were sighted, correct? I was, I was sighted for nearly thirty-nine years. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, it, it's it's one thing I think to be born without it and never know it. It's it's another thing to be born with it and then lose it, uh, yeah. and then and and trying to imagine going through that. Um, I can see how you when it happens and when it happened to you, how it's very easy that you could get lost within yourself, be, and why you would have to have the the help of somebody else to get you through it because you can get lost in your own mind. Uh, well, what you, I'm thinking, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm, that's my impression. It would be because I can imagine where I would go and it would be to my own imagination and it would probably lead in, in dark directions. Well, that the, the first year after, obviously you, you told the, the grim news that you're blind and we're going to have to get in touch with social services and you'll have. Right. Most, the sensory team and their specially trained social workers and nurses and they come round to your house and you're going through all the rehabilitation and things that everybody takes for granted, making a sandwich or making a cup of coffee or brushing your teeth, all of that you have to be uh, shown how to do again. It's like being a toddler again, an infant. So that first year you're that busy with rehabilitation and you're being given uh, you know, you, you're blind cane uh, and you, you're shown how to use that safely and effectively and, you know, you get your uh, technology if you want that and, you know, you have all this stuff that can speak to you and screen readers for your laptop and talking clocks and watches and talking uh, weighing kitchen scales for weighing things out. There's so much going on that in that first year, I was that busy to even think about it and then when all the rehabilitation stopped, the the the, uh, the anxiety started. So it was a delayed action that was held at bay 
by being really busy. And then when the sensory team had, you know, said, well, you have all the skills that you need now to start approaching life on your own, that's when things went boom. I can hear you. Yeah. It sounds like there should be a psychological team at the end or during. Well, I, I did, I did, uh, I did sign up then with the the RNIB, which is the Royal Royal National Institute for the Blind. They do uh, special counselling sessions. It's called bereavement counselling. So for people that have gone blind and are finding it hard to deal with it emotionally and psychologically. You can have counselling, and I had 12 sessions of counselling, uh, which helped massively, and I was also put on some, whether or not you believe in it or not, I was put on anti-anxiety meds by the doctor, which I still take. You know, I I still suffer with anxiety because of being blind, but it's just something like I'll get a bit of a lump in my throat now if I'm going to somewhere new and I'm uncertain of it. I'll get a bit of a dry throat, a lump in the throat, or I will get a bit quiet and withdrawn and Nicola will pick up on that and she'll say, you all right? And I'll say, yeah, I'm just in that place now where I just need to, you know, basically I'm saying, I'm fine, but just leave me alone now for 10, 15 minutes while my brain's going through processes and, you know, doing these demonstrations at Maker Central and you kiss and wood turning clubs and things like that. My brain's having to process so much just to psych myself up to get up in front because people want to see, and it's, you know, from a sighted wood turner that's there doing a demo, you want to see someone that's technically proficient, mm -hmm. you want to be entertained, you want to have someone that doesn't just stand there and doesn't speak, apart from maybe half a dozen times. You want someone that will engage with them, have fun, you know, you can have the, have the banter back and forwards. And, you know, it's it's a lot to ask for anybody. But when you can't see, and I'm trying to be safe and, and turn something at a demonstration and look good while I'm at it, there's a lot to deal with. So I can go a bit quiet and a bit, like I say, withdrawn before a demo. But you know, I, I understand that that's probably enhanced a little bit, but uh, I don't want you to think that uh, even uh, people that are uh, fully gifted don't go through very similar things. I mean, having had to do similar things in my past as to that, I, I understand that anxiety. And it's it's not unnatural to any human being. Um, I can understand why it may be accentuated a bit for you, uh, but it, that's not something that I would I, I would classify as being you know unique to you. Uh, because that that is something yeah. that, that a lot of us go through. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know it's not new, unique, and it's you'd, you'd call it stage fright, I suppose. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what it is. It's called stage fright because you're trying to make sure that everything goes right. You look good. Things go well, and you're a little nervous that things might not go well. And you know, it. it and then you, you kind of walk your way through it. But the, but I've never had to do that without being able to see what I was approaching. So I can understand how that that might enhance uh, how you feel, uh, yeah. because you're you're walking into a situation you you don't know what the situation really is visually, um, and so you're trying to imagine what this is going to be all about and try to play towards that that approach to it, and so it becomes a little more complex. And so I think that you know, granted, Chris, I I think that w when you have to take those meds, they probably uh, are very well. Uh, <laughs> very well prescribed for you to do so because I, I understand that very well. well they, they do they do work for me and I know it's not everybody's cup of tea to you know go down the uh, prescription pharmaceutical route and people might say oh no there's other ways but you know they work for me and it enables me to function and get get on with with a, a day you know and like I say I get that feeling of stage fright just by going to a new shop or, you know, a restaurant I've been to, you know, so those feelings that people would get in front of a crowd of a thousand people, mm -hmm. there's a sort of feelings I get going to a new shop or a, a new shopping mall. So <laughs> it's uh, it's just, it's part of the condition and that's the way it is. But uh, you got to keep smiling, keep acting silly as I do and having a laugh and always pushing myself. And that's, that's you know, brilliant medicine too. You know, at, find time to act silly every day. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's good. Laughter is the best medicine most often. Yeah.
without a doubt. Uh, we've got a couple more questions uh, left to go. We've got one from the Wood Barber. Uh, first of all, it's, I'll, I'll quickly tell everyone that not a lot of people know you've actually started welding now as well. All right. So, yeah. the, the question from the Wood Barber is when's the next welding video coming? Well, that's uh, that's going to come very, very soon. In fact, uh, I'm almost ready to start this uh, this wooden stool project. So the wood barber and, yeah, Dave, he, Dave managed to get me some more scraps of metal to practice on. And I'm getting more confident now. And this sizzling bacon sound that everyone refers to, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've got my ear tuned into that sound so it's coming along nicely and I've, I've actually laid down some decent beads so uh now that i've had the 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 sponsorship package come from axminster which we can talk about a bit more maybe later uh the the arbotech arbotech turbo planer blade has arrived which i was holding on for to do this uh power carving for this stool which I'm going to incorporate some uh, metal work and I'll need to weld the the legs for the stool to the brackets, which will be affixed to the underside of the stool. So these things are clicking into place now. So to answer your question, Dave, the wood barber, is probably in the next couple of weeks, I'll do another uh, welding video and uh, we can we can have a giggle and try to set the workshop on fire again. That's <laughs> awesome, Chris. And uh, just, uh, just, just yeah, so you yeah. know, uh, Jason is actually wearing an Arbitech T-shirt, and if if you want to bring, if you if you want to talk about Axminster, let's do it now because we're running a bit out of time. So if you want to uh, speak about your 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 mm. involvement with them, that'd be great. Right. Well, yeah. Obviously, Axminster is where I was purchasing my wood turning stuff from, right from the get go, and they were they were so nice to me right from that very first visit, and uh, you know, you, you want any help and if if you need a drink or a chair that's fine and you know they were so nice and it was axminster that gave me my first ever professional demonstration opportunity they had complete faith in me from the start and they'd seen a couple of videos so they had my back right from the beginning so uh it, it's really progressed from there and it was because of me doing that first demo that other people that were that came and they attended that demo that were members of wood turning clubs went away and said you know chris is you know is an amazing wood turner and you know he can't see and let's have him at the wood turning club so i owed them a lot uh and then when uh i did sort of like uh, approach them about the sponsorship deal uh the the head guy of axminster he said well of course we follow your uh your journey with great interest chris and you know we, we we love what you're doing store for us and he said let me have a chat with the marketing department and then within a few days they got back to me and said yeah we'd love to sponsor you and you know uh support you in a more professional way and and then they said you know is is there anything you'd love on your dream sort of like bucket list of tools so i just said oh well, i'd love a nice table saw and a turbo planer blade and a good router table and uh and they said yeah you've got it mate you've got it and obviously uh they came through and it was delivered uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh i just i can't thank them enough and I, it gives me the the opportunity to uh learn more things and carry on inspiring people and motivating people and the table saw that i've got it's got a sliding table on it so with that in mind it's like having a built-in cross-cut sled so i don't have to go anywhere near the blade when i'm doing cross cuts and uh so it's just really they've given me the stuff there that i really need to push my boundaries and push the envelope even further and uh it's a great company to have the support of and i, I work very hard for them and they've been there for me from the get-go so it wasn't a huge leap of faith for either of us to make it a more professional partnership as opposed to, you know, just giving me the odd demo in store, which I was massively grateful for anyway. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, the the la last question now before we get to the, the shout-outs and things like that is uh, boxes or briefs? All right. Uh, I I prefer briefs. Uh, always always have done and always will do. 
I don't like the draft that you get. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Obviously not a Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> right, Leo. Uh, okay, so obviously time's ticking away now and Joe's giving us the evil eye because he's got to do the edit. So let's get on to some of the shout-outs. Joe, who, is, uh, who have you been watching this week? Um, my shout-out this week, quite a big channel. It's William Osman. I've been like literally binge-watching his videos recently. He's like got that real engineering mindset, and his videos are really entertaining. He's just like a real character to follow along with. So if you haven't seen him before, there should be a link in the description, and easily search William Osman on YouTube. Go and check him out, guys. He's great. Okay, okay. What about you, Jace? Uh, smarter every day. You put out uh, two vortex rings colliding in slow motion. It's really cool when they collide. They create a whole bunch of vortex rings around it. Like once it separates, uh, they spent about two years trying to get it just right, and they finally got it. So anyway, he's got he's got a video on basically just describing it, and then a, a video, full length video on like all their research. It's cool. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, what about you, uh, Chris? Cute. Um, well, am I, I'm, it's going to be kind of not along the maker world. Mine is different this week. If you guys are, uh, I'm, I well, needless to say, I have been and remain very much into music. Do you guys follow the uh, the late late show with uh, James Corden? You know, yeah, uh, I've watched it every now and again. Yeah. Okay, well, he, they actually have a YouTube channel. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Uh, and I caught a great bit that he did with he and Paul McCartney. They went driving around Liverpool, going Ooh. back to Paul's old uh, stomping grounds. Uh, and if you like the Beatles or if you're even into music at all, you need to check that out. The, the title of the video was called Paul McCartney Carpool Karaoke. It's seriously entertaining, and it's fun to watch. It's about 20 minutes long, I think, 23. Um but if you're into that kind of thing and you want to, you know, kind of take a break from the maker world for a second and just go, div you know, delve into that, it was a gr it was a great video. I mean, it really was. So if you have a chance, go check it out. Okay, fair enough. Uh, what about you, Chris? Have you got any shout outs for anybody? Yeah, uh, one one guy that I've been listening to uh, for hundreds of hours lately, related to the welding, uh, is called Chuck E. So that's Chuck as in Charlie Brown, Chuck, and then an E. 2009 is a is a, a young lad uh, that lives in Texas and he does great welding videos, hints and tips and tutorials. And he's wrangling with farm machinery. Uh, uh, he's, he's he's taught me a lot and uh, he's he's very he's very very good and he knows his stuff. But he's it's light hearted and uh, he makes me uh, have a bit of a giggle when I'm listening to him. And yeah, go check him out, Chucky 2009. Great stuff. Um, and my shout out goes to um, a Matt Esley. Um, he was at Maker Central, um, so uh, you might have met him there if he was uh, if he was able to attend. Um, but the reason I'm giving him a shout out is he made a uh, an incredible six string bass guitar, and he called it the Roadworks Bass. Um, he actually did this uh, over a, a, a span of a 20-part series on making the guitar. And uh, video number 21 is like a montage of all of the videos put together. And the, the final piece is uh, it all stringed up and he plays it and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that was that one. But I've actually got an honourable mention as well, which is uh, Eloy Escahalo. He's, uh, he's got a segment on his channel at the moment called The More We Know. And uh, this week he done uh, the history of the scroll saw. Oh, God. Why did I know you were going to bring that up? So, <laughs> Sounds interesting. Yeah. So, I, I think the first one he did was the, the history of the drill, which, yeah, made, that's which, right. which more people may like. I've also got the normal segment of Jamie's page. <laughs> and uh, which is just uh, just letting people know a few people's achievements. We've got Jacko Whatever has just reached 500,000 subscribers. Awesome. Uh, John from Be Happy Woodworking and Honeybees, <clears throat> excuse me, has just released, uh, just, just released, just got uh, 100 subscribers. Cool. And uh, just to let everybody know, 
Uh, Pat Lapper's got a challenge going on at the moment, uh, an open challenge, which is to turn a goblet in five minutes or less. So, yeah, if you want to enter that. Uh, that I'm not sure if there's any prizes or anything going. I think it's just a, a fun challenge. I think it's just fun. I, I do have one quick question for Chris, if we could scoot that in. If, for a lot of content creators watch this show or listen, um, I was wondering if you have any advice to help like other content creators in making their content more friendly for those who are visually impaired. Well, well, just be as descriptive as you can. Now, there's a lot of people uh, that don't do any talking at all, and uh, they'll, they'll sort of like fast forward their their entire video uh, which is fine if that's your style and that's what's made you successful go for it uh, but you know if someone with a visual impairment gets in touch with you and says i really love your stuff and someone's described what you do to me i want to know more but it's difficult because i can't see you know just bear that in mind and uh just be as descriptive as you can every now and then you know uh break from the routine and do something with a bit of a voiceover uh, with the visually impaired community uh, in mind, and that would be really cool. And obviously, it's your channel, it's your rules. We don't expect you to, you know, stop doing what's what you love doing. But just every now and then, you can, you know, throw a bit of narration in or voiceover, and that would be really cool and helpful. Uh, and uh, that's that's really the best best advice I can give. As much uh, narration and description as you can, if you want to uh, involve the BVI, which is the blind and visually impaired community. That would be massively awesome. But at the end of the day, just do what you want to do. But obviously. Uh, awesome. Awesome question, Jason. And and <laughs> seriously, very, I'm glad you asked that. And Chris, yeah. I, I, I think I speak for all of us. And I, I, if, if, if I don't, then somebody correct me. But man, you are an amazing inspiration to a lot of people. And I, I seriously, seriously want to thank you for spending the time that you have spent with us today because it's been great getting to know you. Um, and if you can't get motivated after after talking and speaking with this guy for an hour, then I don't know what's going to take. So <laughs> you, my friend, thank you very much for joining us well, today. I do appreciate you, it. Thank you so very much for uh, being such a, an amusing, uh, uh, such an amazing group of friends this evening. And thanks for all your kind words. And it's it's words like that that keep me motivated and uh, keep me driving on and uh, not dead can't quit guys absolutely that's absolutely there you go cheers Chris cheers everyone cheers All right. take care so uh, that's it everybody so uh, until next week so it's uh, see you later from me have a great week everybody bye see you next week guys take her easy bye.